So does everyone remember, did anyone like go through puberty in the late 90s <laughs> and early 2000s? So if you did, like me, um, this should, you should get this reference, otherwise if not, this is actually a, a teen rom-com where uh, this bad boy played by Heath Ledger uh, has to uh, seduce this girl so her sister can go on a date. And that kind of like, reminds me of iOS 7, when iOS 7 first came about. Um, it, it really was really, really weird. Like, iOS 7 was this, this thing that kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, once a particular person, what's his name again? Scott Forstall was ousted six months before. Uh, and then Johnny Ive took the reins of, uh, I don't know, design. You know this one. Yeah, chief design officer of everything, like interface, like uh, software and hardware. So this is inspired by that talk. So I'm just going to go through it. So that's wrong. But anyways, um, should, it be? should be big in the middle. I think it's just a back. I suck at Markdown. Yeah, that's just. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not your fault. Uh, so UI controller um, kind of sucks, you know, in iOS seven and above. Uh, I mean, iOS six and below, it. Yes, it looked hideous, but the, um, I feel that they, they minimized the tap regions uh, on the picking controller. So this is actually going to be a lightning talk, just so you know. Uh, number two, your navigation bar. So one thing that sort of grinds my gears about your navigation bar is if you have a left bar button item and a right bar button item, right bar button item, uh, if the right item or one of the items is longer than the other side, then the title label gets off center. And annoys me. And then you know we got introduced to translucent and opaque uh, navigation bars. Sounds cool, but like if you're like us, we had an opaque navigation bar through our entire app. And then this design trend came about where they don't want to show the navigation bar; they just want to show like a big image instead. So, trans uh, doing segues from translucent to opaque is can be difficult. And this one automatically just scroll view insets. Uh, it always gets me because sometimes I always forget about, like, I had a text for the other day and that's a scroll view, but I kind of just didn't really think about that, so it caused me some pain. Number three, uh, UI page view controller. So does anyone use UI page, page view controller? What are your thoughts about it? New. Yeah. New. Right, like why not use a collection view? But the API is really weird because when you create a UI page view controller, you have to pass in an array of view controls that can only contain one item, I think. Um, and the delegate methods are really weird, right? So let's say I want to sort of track when, um, let's have a view controller and I want to start tracking when the, let's say, X position is being scrolled. I actually cannot get the value of that X position. So that annoys me. Yeah, my, my highest rated answer on Stack Overflow is about UI page view controls. <laughs> Uh, number four, UI status bar. So in iOS 7, the UI status bar became literally the biggest thing inside the iOS interface. It overtook everything. And it's funny because even Apple couldn't get it right all the time. Uh, we all got stories and screenshots where UI status bar was doing kind of some weird stuff, uh, especially with App Store with me. Um, <coughs> and in iOS 9, they deprecated the... Uh, what was it? The UI status, UI application, shared application, set status bar style to be deprecated. So now the view controller, you know, has to choose its preferred status bar style, which is okay if you're starting a new project. But if you have a big project, we have I think 130 view controllers, so that makes uh, upgrading to the latest APIs a bit time-consuming. Uh, number five, UI collection view. So. I actually got this from you from the other day. Um, is anyone tried making a UI collection view with insets? And insets, because they're insets, like you have different dimensions between the phone screen. So the insets, uh, if it's a floating point number, right? So if you do, let's say, minus 3.4 or whatever, uh, the insets won't be uniform across the entire uh, collection view. Number six, UI table view, insert and delete row animation. So. If you've ever tried deleting a row, 
and it's in a weird position. You'll get some weird funky animations. And I've seen this recently in the Apple settings app. So it makes me feel better that they can't get it right. Uh, number seven is MVC. So, you know, from, pardon? Big <laughs> from, um, from the day we start learning about building iOS apps, you know, we're told MVC is a proper way. I'm like, okay, that's cool. But depending on the size of your app, MVC starts becoming more of a problem than it does a solution. So that's why MVVM was somehow created. And I still think MVVM is pretty gross. Um, that's why you put everything in the app delegate. Haven't you learned that? <laughs> well, I use singletons too, but no. Nah. Uh, MVVM, and then there's also yeah. there's also Viper. And I think Viper's uh, a little bit too far into the distance. But uh, I'm gonna probably do a talk on architecture soon. Um, number eight, UI storyboards. So this is a pretty hotly debated topic. Um, the biggest thing with storyboards is this stringly typed APIs, and you know we try to avoid them at the same time. Like we write these protocols to sort of take away these stringly types, but in the end they're all really stringly typed. Um, like US segue is really annoying because like you have to call a function that takes itself in, and then that function you have to do a switch and a check if the identifier is what you match. And if the identifier is wrong, then you get a runtime crash. Um, I kind of just like pushing view controllers with code. Number nine, UI nib. So it's not that I dislike UI nib, it's that I dislike that it's not supported as well as it should be. Um, UI nib is a lot nicer than storyboards, you know, because you can actually do UI, but at the same time you have to don't bring in, you don't have to bring in the, uh, all the weight of storyboards. But, you know, if you want to instantiate a view controller or a view from a UI nib, you have to kind of write all this boilerplate code. And even that relies on stringly type APIs. Uh, number 10, this is the weirdest one. I don't know how I ever got in, but VFL. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Has anyone ever tried writing VFL? Yeah. I like it. Get out. <laughs> so VFL is this thing like when auto layout first came out, I was like, wow, this is really cool. And you can write all your layout with in some ASCII. code. Is it ASCII? Well, Ooh, it's kind of yeah. like, That's I don't know. The way it should be, Andy. You know it. VFL, I don't know. I'd rather use storyboards over VFL. Uh, I had some other ones that couldn't make into the list, so I got some uh, honorable mentions. Um, iOS brought in Helvetica everywhere, which was, I don't know, I, I kind of like, it's funny watching Apple introduce Helvetica and really, really thin uh, types to then bring it back Oh, sorry, it started out thick, and then they brought it really thin, and then they brought it back to thick, because I realized people, not everyone has 20-20 vision, but they have 20-20 hindsight. So that's that. Uh, UI visual effect view. So when iOS 7 first came out, uh, we, everyone wanted to sort of mimic that blur. So what we did was we grabbed the UI toolbar, and we stretch it over what we wanted to blur. Um, UI visual effect view is pretty cool if you want to put over something, but the fact that it doesn't actually allow alpha, so we can't modify the alpha, uh, what we have to do is you have to take a snapshot image, apply a blur image radius, and then overlay that on top. Uh, okay, so US segment control. It's just kind of, I always get segments wrong, because you know, sometimes it's blue, sometimes it's white, and I don't really know which is which. And I see this trend happening a lot lately. I was fighting with an app online because I was trying to select something and the segment control is all wrong. And I was like, wait, this is highlighted, so it should be what I'm picking. But no, it's not. Uh, UI web view. I don't know why this is still in the SDK. I mean, it's been there since the beginning, the dawn, since I, uh, iOS SDK 2. When all apps were UI web views. Yes, yes. Uh, and then they recently introduced WK web view, and I'm like, it's good, you know, renders a lot better, it's got a better engine. Yeah, and that's my talk. <laughs> yeah. Are there any questions? It's just to hear me ranting on. Good. Do it. Sure. How, what's the one thing you would like to see change? Sort of like, more from, okay, these are 10 things you hate, but, What's the one thing that 
you would like introduce that will make your life really, really easy? Uh, I'd like swift wrappers around APIs. Um, you know, like too often we have to rely on, I mean, it's subjective C. We're, not, we're never going to get rid of it, at least not in the next decade or whatever. But, you know, it's always nice to have, it'd be nice to have Swift APIs. Like, yes, we have these Objective C things, and Swift can sort of do some cool stuff and then turn into Swift APIs, but the APIs aren't truly uh, Swift. So. Do you think that's more, okay, the APIs are still in this MVC mindset and model mm -hmm. versus something that's like a really awesome functional Swift API? Functional? Mm. I'm not sure if there's gonna be like any UI kit APIs I can think of off the top of my head, which would be like I've never thought to myself, I want this API to be functional, because I can just write functional stuff. Yeah. Um, but the you know I sort of say it like that is over the years we've seen a lot of really good improvements mm -hmm. to make the bridging between Swift and Objective C and UI kit mm -hmm. a lot nicer. So do we sort of would you like to see things continuing down that route, or would you like to see them taking a different route? I mean, if we're talking about APIs, right, it'd be cool if we hey, if the APIs said, look, if you want to do this, you need to conform to this protocol, yeah. right? And I can just pass in protocol instead of like inheriting from everything. So you want to do this? Okay, cool. You have to inherit from UI page view controller or something like that, or you have to page controller, whatever. Like, it'd be like, hey, just conform to the API and then pass it to this function. Like, more use of Swifty stuff, like APIs. Enums are pretty good, but at the same time, they could always be better. Like, you always pass in, you could also pass in, like, associated values. Um, yeah. Cool. Thank you. <laughs>